Okay, welcome everyone to tonight's Heritage Committee uh, meeting. After some short uh, delays, we're here and ready to get started. So uh, the roll call has been taken by the clerk and I just want to remind Heritage Committee members of the procedural rules to assist us to operate as efficiently as possible. All members shall remain muted when not speaking to reduce feedback. All camera for Heritage Committee members shall be turned on. Staff will be requested to join the video should a need to answer questions arise. Persons who have registered for this meeting who are speaking to applications will be brought into the meeting upon introduction of the item. Any member of the Heritage Committee should indicate they wish to uh, speak by hitting the raise hand button on the participants list screen. In the event of connection or service interruption, uh, we may recess for up to 15 minutes until we have regained quorum. If quorum is not achieved, the meeting will be adjourned. All members uh, participating by video online conference will vote by a physical, uh, physical show of hands. The chair will indicate to leave your hands raised until he has determined the result of the vote. So with that, we are ready to proceed with our agenda. Uh, before we get started, are there any declarations of conflicts of interest with anything on the agenda this evening? Seeing none, uh, there are no delegations for tonight's meeting, so we'll move on to 4.1. Uh, or four items for consideration and 4.1 is the proposed alteration to 82 Brant Ave. I would now call on Eliza Avenza to uh, speak to the application and you have 10 minutes to present inclusive of your questions. So we'll just wait for him to be brought into the meeting. There we are. You have an opportunity to uh, speak to your application if you would like to, and you can unmute yourself. Ali Reza, are you able to unmute? Oh. There, there you go. Oh, hello everyone, good evening. Do you, do you have a presentation for us or anything you uh, would like to add? Yes, uh, this is uh, Ali Reza, you can call me Ali. I would like to give you a brief uh, explanation about the project. Uh, the, the reason I designed the ramp is providing is to provide more facilities with uh, disabled people. When I was at site, I figured out that there are there, there were two high uh, steps at the front of the building and handicapped or disabled people couldn't go there because of the uh, two high steps, more than eight inches or more than 12 inches. So I spoke with the client in order to provide uh, more facilities with uh, disabled people. We, we made a decision to design an exterior ramp for uh, disabled people. So I designed uh, an exterior ramp, which was located at the, at the left-hand side of the building. The previous meeting we had, I was asked to relocate the, the exterior ramp from the left-hand side to the middle of the building. So I revised the drawings as per the, uh, as per the comments I received, and I sent uh, all, the received, uh, all the revised drawings uh, to the committee. Uh, if you see the drawings, you can see, and if you compare the, uh, the revised drawings with the previous one, you will figure out that the drawings uh, has been already, uh, have been already revised as per the comments I received. Uh, so I think we need to provide more facilities with, for disabled people. We have to take care of disabled people. It's our responsibility to, to take care of them. So I, 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 I'm requesting you, I, I would love to request you to look at uh, from this point of view to the, uh, to the project. So this is an exterior ramp. It doesn't affect, uh, I know this, this building is a heritage building. The exterior ramp doesn't affect the, the heritage building or the facade or anything. The, the, the entire store is already existing, is already installed. I didn't touch it. And when I spoke with the client, it, was, it had been already installed when he bought uh, the building. So the exterior door uh, has been equipped with a power door and the width of the door has been 
uh, approved and confirmed by the uh, by the exam examiner. So everything is, is correct as per OBC code. As we, everything uh, complies to uh, OBC. And uh, if you have further comments, uh, I would like to hear that. I would like to address all of your comments on the drawings. Again, the, the, the reason I designed the, the exterior ramp well is uh, to help disabled people. Please uh, consider this issue in, into the meeting and let me know if I can help you out with this project more. Thank you so much, Ali. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Ali? Uh, seeing none, uh, I, oh, Councilor Wall, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just looking at the minutes here. There was a comment about uh, restoring the entrance of the building and then inclusion of an automatic door. Was that considered? Yes, in the, uh, if you look at the uh, building, uh, building uh, uh, drawings, uh, it was already designed and uh, show, shown on the drawings. So the, the, the entrance door has been equipped with a power door or automatic door. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other uh, questions for Ali here? Uh, just a comment. I, I, know that, uh, I know that this did uh, set you back a little bit, uh, having to uh, take that into consideration. And I think uh, what you've done is, is very good. You, you've taken what uh, our suggestions into consideration. And I think, and I appreciate you for doing that. So thank oh, you. You are very welcome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now we will move on to staff for their presentation. Uh, through the chair, Victoria Coates, senior planner in long range planning. Um, Julia, can you allow me to share my screen for the presentation? You should be able to. Oh, now I can. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so I'll just give a brief overview of the um, heritage permit application for 82 Brant Ave, um, as it has been amended, as Ali just mentioned. Um, so the property is located within the Brant Avenue Heritage Conservation District, and it's shown on the aerial photo here. The building is currently being used as a dental office. <clears throat> um, the proposed alterations um, include the installation of a ramp and the installation of a wider front door. And these alterations are aimed at improving the accessibility of the building for persons with disabilities. The Heritage Committee previously considered this application at their March meeting. And at that time, the committee requested um, some additional information related to the accessibility of the proposal and the viability of restoring the uh, entrance back to the center of the building. Um, so in terms of the proposed alter alterations, um, the ramp, um, as Ali has mentioned, has been um, revised so that it is now aligned along the existing front walkway. Um, so you can see the drawing here, the uh, existing walkway connects the public sidewalk to the front door, and now the ramp will provide that accessible entrance um, for all persons accessing the building. So staff did um, connect with the building department who is responsible for reviewing the building permit application, which is required to construct the ramp. And the building department did confirm um, that the Ontario Building Code contains those technical um, regulations for, for things like the slope of the ramp, the handrails, um, that sort of thing, and that the ramp must meet all of those requirements. And uh, those requirements are included in the Ontario Building Code to ensure that um, a ramp like this is accessible and safe for persons with disabilities to use. Staff also um, consulted with the city's um, accessibility coordinator. Um, the accessibility coordinator doesn't typically review building permit and heritage permit applications, but she was able to provide some input to this application. And um, the accessibility coordinator was supportive of the owner's initiative to make the building accessible. And in particular, um, that the front entrance has been made accessible as opposed to a, a secondary side or rear entrance. Um, the accessibility coordinator did recommend that if possible, um, 
all you all people accessing the building should be using the same path of travel. So staff relayed that information to um, the applicant and the applicant was able to amend their application to align that ramp along the existing walkway so that all um, users use the same path of travel. And this also helps to preserve that symmetry that um, the property currently has. Um, just for the committee's reference, I've included the drawing of the previous one that was uh, reviewed by the committee in March. So you can see that ramp was sort of off to the left side of the property. Um, and now it's been aligned along that walkway. Uh, the other alteration includes the installation of a wider front door. Um, so the, the proposed replacement door is shown here. Um, you can see the applicant has selected a door that is very similar in, in style and color to the existing door. Um, and both the applicant and the building department has confirmed that the uh, door will be equipped with a power door system. There'll be an automatic door button on the exterior and interior of the building to um, facilitate access for persons with disabilities. Um, now the committee also um, was inquiring as to whether or not that door could be relocated to the center of the building as it is off to the side. And um, the applicant has indicated that they're not considering uh, relocating the door as part of this application. Um, the door was, was located in that location when the current Orno purchased the property and uh, relocating that door would require um, additional uh, um, alterations to the interior of the building. The applicant has already received a, uh, approval for a building permit to do some interior renovations, which are also focused on making accessibility improvements for persons with disabilities. Um, so in particular, just inside the front door, there is a, a vestibule, um, which has been designed and, and sized to accommodate a turning radius for persons with disabilities. It also allows a door to the waiting room to swing into that area. So the applicant's not, uh, not considering relocating the door because it was in, would impact that functionality of the building. Um, so while the proposal doesn't restore the building to its original appearance, um, it is the opinion of staff that that new door will continue to respect the building, uh, the character of the building as well as the um, heritage district as a whole. Um, so staff is of the opinion that the um, alterations proposed are sympathetic to the building and uh, recommends approval of this amended application for 82 Grand Avenue. And I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, does any member of the committee have any questions of staff? Uh, seeing none, I just want to thank you, Victoria, for working uh, with the client on this as well and the extra work that went into it. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Um, so we're at the point now where we need a motion and the motion uh, suggested is that it be approved. Would someone like to make that motion? Jamie, thank you. Do we have a seconder for the motion? Tamara, thank you very much. Uh, any discussion on the motion? No? Okay. Oh, Council Wall, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to thank the applicant staff. Um, you know, we really appreciate you taking into consideration the feedback from this committee. It means a lot that uh, people do that. So thank you so much. Great. Uh, anything else before I call the vote? Okay, all those in favor? Hands down. All those opposed? And I'll ask Lise to unmute herself and indicate how she wishes to vote. In favor. Thank you. I declare uh, the motion carried then. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Ali. We will move on to item 4.2, which is a proposed alteration to 155 Brain Ave. We have Amy Al Allison here as well as, I think his name is Doug Hunt, if I remember correctly. Um, and they're here to uh, speak, or oh, sorry, Stephen Hunt, I'm sorry, I apologize. And uh, so you're here to present to the committee. You have 10 minutes inclusive of questions. So go ahead whenever you're ready. Hi, my name is Amy. Um, I know Steve is on here as well too. I will... Um... Just start off by saying thank you so much for taking the time this evening and considering our application for the alteration of the windows on 155 Brant Ave. One of the 
reasons why we decided to purchase this building was the, um, first of all, it's on Brant Ave, and it is absolutely stunning. Um, the yellow brick with the black, with the um, new landscaping that they have done. Um, I'm a, I've been in um, a part of Brantford for the last 13 years, and I have a small business um, that is uh, a part of this community and growing. And that's why we also um, uh, purchased the building for the business uh, to grow. Unfortunately, it is now the third time that I have been closed down during COVID, but um, <laughs> we will continue to pivot. Um, so we're focusing on the building for right now, but um, you know, it, it's the, the building itself. And just to be on Brant Ave, it, when we walked into this building, it screamed at us. Like it was just, it fit my business and what I do and just the heritage feels well too. So our intentions for this building is to uh, bring it back to life, to bring back the character. It is strong. It's a strong, it's got great bones. Um, it just needs some TLC to it. Uh, you know, Steve and I, our purpose is to, when people drive down Brant Ave, you already see so many beautiful buildings where you're like, wow, look at that. We want to be a part of that too. And, um, you know, for us with the alterations of the windows, we want to keep the, um, the, the look of the, uh, of course, the seven facing windows on Brant Ave with the, the camber uh, tops, um, bring that back out. But um, yeah, we, we just, we want to make sure that we, we take care of the building, that we restore it. And um, we're just asking for just some alterations in the sense of, we know that it wouldn't be a traditional wooden window, but we're um, looking for, um, you know, the, uh, the acceptance to do the alteration of the windows, which will allow us affordability to be able to do all of those things. Steve, do you have anything that you wanted to add? Oh, you have to Steve, unmute. Steve, you're on mute. Yeah. Sorry, I thought he unmuted. Sorry about that. Um, no, I think Amy did a did a reasonable, really good job, and uh, I don't have anything to add. I'd also just, oops, sorry. I'm, I'd also just like to um, add in there as well too, the, the reason as well for restoring or um, uh, alterating the, the windows is um, many of them are non-functional um, and that poses a hazard as well with our, we have a tenant upstairs who actually moves in tomorrow. Um, so she doesn't have any functioning windows. Uh, well, she may have one or two functioning windows. Um, you know, all the pulley systems are gone out of them. So you literally have to like try to maneuver, if you can open, I think there's only about four that actually open within the whole entire home. So um, you have to push it up and then put a piece of wood underneath. And then with the aluminum um, uh, screening that's on the other side, they're rusted out. So you have to put another piece of something underneath them to, <laughs> for the window to stay open. So getting fresh air can be challenging in that house. Okay. Is that of your presentation? Um, I, I believe so. I, I know that uh, I've been working with Tara, so I know that she's gonna go over, she's got some pictures to, to show um, the, the house itself um, with the, the camber uh, windows, et cetera. Okay. Uh, any member of the committee have questions for the applicant? Uh, seeing none, I have, oh, go ahead, Tamara, if you have one, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to ask, is any level of that storefront or is it pretty much all rental units? Yeah, so the upper um, part is all, uh, it's just one apartment and then down below is where it's the commercial part and that's where my business will be. Um, I just had one question. Uh, I saw in, in, in the report and everything as well, uh, or perhaps it was your letter that was included in there that you mentioned, uh, like there are wood windows, original wood windows. And you also mentioned that a number of other properties along Brand Ave have had their wood windows replaced with uh, what you're proposing to do. 
Yep. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, that was provided um, from a window company. And uh, the sills in the windows, those yep. are going to remain wooden sills? Yes. Yes, they will. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad that, I mean, I, I don't like the losing the wood uh, as it's, uh, you know, the, the original feature. But yeah. I know uh, there's a lot of buildings in Brantford with those original wood sills. And uh, I'm glad that to see that you're keeping those. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time and your presentation. Uh, we'll move forward to staff now. Then. And Tara, it's nice to see Tara. We haven't seen Tara for a while. We're, I think used to seeing her with the Mohawk Lake uh, working group kind of stuff. Uh, so it's nice to have her back here talking a little bit of heritage to us this evening. So go ahead, Tara. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Good evening, members of the Heritage Committee. Yes, I do know some of you, most of you actually. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Tara Tran. I'm a senior planner in long range planning and I work with Victoria and others. And I'm here tonight just to support Victoria in processing some of the heritage applications that have come in recently. I'm going to share my screen. Start at the beginning. So through you, uh, Mr. Chair, to the members, I'm talking tonight about 155 Brant Avenue, Heritage Application 0221, which is within the Her Brant Avenue Heritage Conservation District between Henrietta Street, Street to the north and Richmond Street to the south on the north side of Brant Ave. The building is shown here, the front of the building. It was originally built in 1865. I, I unfortunately was not able to source any original photos from that era, um, but here it is today. It's currently being used, proposed to be used for commercial uses on the ground floor and residential in the upper floor. And I believe that's a continuation of, of how this building has been used for the last several years. The proposed alterations by the applicant is to replace the existing 22 windows, which are located on all sides of the building, to new vinyl windows. And that the front facade, as the applicant has mentioned, would continue to be all seven windows, original opening, but just have that um, extra special camber top to them. When just doing a brief basic historical review of some of the architectural features of this, building. The, the windows are noted, um, but uh, only just to say that you know, it's a very moderate camber top style top. It noted that the windows have segmental arch heads with soldier brick. Um, but the, the other main feature, which is slated to maintain, is, is the, some of the other features which are not related to the windows. So just to be sure um, everyone understands what a camber style window looks like, I've shown an image, which is from the, the window company um, proposed to be used by the applicant. So that's shown on the, the photograph here and the wood trim, as we talked about the wood trim and the wood sills would be maintained. The original openings would be maintained. And as the applicant had noted, she is very much trying to improve the functionality of the windows, which many of them do not operate or are broken glass as some of the photos had shown. And certainly energy efficiency is also something to be improved. And um, in the Appendix C of the staff report, you can just see that there are several other windows all around the building that are of different color consistency, um, different shapes, different styles. So. Um, at least adding consistent color would kind of make a more uniform look to the building. I also wanted the members to be clear on exactly what would the new windows look like, what elements would be maintained in wood and what elements might be the new black vinyl. So this figure two in the staff report emphasizes that the wood trim and the wood sills would be maintained and painted black where there's a camber tile stop, then the arch would be actually a full window arch. But some of the other windows on the left and the right sides, which have the soldier arch, 
um, which, which the applicant is proposing maintaining square shaped windows, new vinyl windows. So then there would be black vinyl just to fill in that arch. Um, the casing, the lining on the, the window would be in black. And then as noted, the sills would be maintained in black. Um, so again, trying to bring consistency to all the windows. So to guide this application, I looked to the Brant Avenue Heritage Conservation District study. And there are three main areas in this study that are relevant to this application. So they, they do guide that it is a major alteration because windows constitutes a major alteration, that they want uh, replacement windows to be of similar style and have a sympathetic scale and rhythm to the existing buildings. So this building is not individually designated, but as part of the district, um, it's to maintain the overall streetscape and the windows would be taller, more tall than they are wide. That it, the guidelines do propose or suggest that materials should be original to the building, but if new materials are employed, they should be used in a manner that's consistent with the original design and adapted to replicate the existing forms or conditions. And lastly, just with regards to the color, just making sure that it is two or three color scheme for the entire building. So with that, I, I think the applicant is maintaining overall the most important facade, which is the front and uh, making sure that it is, while not new wooden materials, certainly replicating and being consistent with the original design, not, not proposing any alterations to the openings and maintaining a consistent coloring. Um, it's my understanding that the facade is the most important one to maintain to reflect the streetscape. And as you might have seen in Appendix D of the staff report, the cost of, so while the applicant is not suggesting or able to use wood, um, as you could see in the quotes, the cost of wood is exceptionally high these days. And the cost of replacing or restoring, restoring or repairing in wood, um, one window is about 10 times the cost of a vinyl treatment. And so at a price tag of 43,000, that would only address the front seven windows and not even address the fact that additional uh, storm windows would need to be constructed as well to, because if you restore the windows, they're single pane, so you would also need additional storm windows. And, and that was not actually priced out by Roberts in restoration. So the applicant did do the investigation into restoring, the cost is very, very high. And for much less, she's actually able to um, repair all 22 windows in a new material, um, but then hopefully preserve the building, the building's integrity in other ways. The rest of these photos just give you a sense. I wanted to be sure that the members are able to see all the windows. So you're the, um, the appendix um, details each window and where applicable the applicant has provided some interior, to interior photographs to just demonstrate their lack of functionality. So a lot of windows, um, a lot of windows on the right side of the building, some in the rear. Um, here's the quote again, just to show you just the, the difference in price from restoration. So restoration of existing wood, restoration in new wood, and then um, even West Brant windows, she had, uh, the applicant had price out um, new wood. And then finally the vinyl, the quote for all, all 22 windows in vinyl. So with that, I think um, the applicant has done some due diligence in investigating the cost to, and, and options to restore the window. Um, she's also told that the, you know, it, it would take time for restoration to occur. So with that and the idea that generally the proposal is largely consistent with the existing design of the original building and respects the overall streetscape, staff do recommend that this application be approved. I'll take your questions. Okay.
Uh, any members of the committee have any questions for Tara? Susan, go ahead. Hi, Tara, uh, through the chair. Uh, Tara, what, uh, what is the situation with the front door in terms of color scheme as it relates to the windows and the requirements that uh, guidance rather that you mentioned? Through the chair to Susan, my understanding is the applicant is not changing the door or the window that sits above the door at this time. Um, so for now, it will stay the uh, existing color. Thank you. Do you have something else to add there, Susan? Uh, how many colors is that then? Um, is the door not black? No, it's yeah. gray. Well, that certainly can be a question that I should, I could clarify, or I see the applicant is still here. Is that an option for them to clarify? Yeah, yeah. I think their uh, the applicant has indicated that it's black, and that that they're intending yeah. to keep that so that it's the same color. The the pictures uh, I saw gray. Yeah. I know sometimes pictures are, are not the necessarily the best, right? They don't capture the the true color sometimes. True. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Susan. Tamara, you had a question there as well, maybe? Yeah, ju just so I'm clear. So the front windows that are facing the street are going to have the round tops, like they're going back to the original design before they went with the storm window kind of situation. So like, it sounds like a great improvement for the front of it. Am I good with that? Yeah, you're correct in understanding that that's how the new windows will be replaced. Any other questions for Tara? I have one. Um, I noticed uh, just there as you had up the quotes, there was two quotes for the West Brant windows and they were separated by less than $5,000 for the wood versus the vinyl. And I'm wondering if our heritage grant program that we've used or that we uh, advocated to council for uh, was recommended to the, to the applicants to uh, address that issue. And perhaps they could have uh, used those wood windows and the, to and the grant to cover the outstanding portion of that. Um, thank you for the question. The applicant was made aware of the grant program. And um, so they do know of the availability of $5,000. Just keep in mind um, that the two West World quotes, again, the one is just simply to replace the front facing windows versus being able to replace all 22 windows. Um, so, so it would be a contribution certainly um, for the applicant to consider, but um, with the current, <laughs> price of wood as it stands, it, it is still just a, um, a very, a portion of the cause and, and not all of, doesn't cover all of the window expenses. Thanks. Thanks for that, Tara. Um, so we have a recommendation before us. Uh, would anyone want to make such a recommendation to approve this? Susan, seeking a seconder. Tara, thank you. Uh, any other discuss uh, discussion on this item? Seeing none, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? All those opposed? Oh, hands down, sorry. All those opposed? And uh, Lise, can you please uh, unmute yourself and indicate how you would like to vote? Um, in favor for this application. Okay, thank you. So with that, I consider that approved. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now move on to consent items. So uh, 5.1 is the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, we need a mover and a seconder for the minutes. Moved by Councillor Wall, a seconder. 
Tamara, thank you very much. Any errors or omissions? Things that need to be corrected in the minutes? Seeing none, uh, I'll call the question on approval of the minutes then. All those in favor? Hands down. All those opposed? And uh, Lise, can you unmute yourself and indicate your vote, please? Uh, I didn't. I didn't know if I could vote for the minute since I wasn't there, but if I can, then approve. Yep, yep you can. You just can uh, move it if you weren't there. So, okay, uh, in favor then. <laughs> yep, with that. So, with that, uh, that is passed. Uh, there are no projects and other updates. Uh, we don't have any uh, subcommittee updates uh, with this lockdown. There are no resolutions, no notices of motion. So, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Susan, thank you very much. Thanks everyone for a great meeting tonight. Thank you.